to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. This is already a sermon for someone. Because when we're in a meeting like this, many people are looking at many things. For others, they are looking at Jesus. For others, they are looking at fame and drawing a very negative inspiration. So it's important to correct this, especially because this is a campus. Hallelujah. Honor is very important. But I must advise you that you only remain in honor when your heart, your hands, your eyes are focused on Jesus. So thank you again, sir. We truly honor you. And then I'd like us to honor our father and for many of you here your grandfather in the faith i believe arguably one of the oldest men of god that we know serving and alive probably within the east of the niger in this nation and among the oldest i know of who are actively serving in the gospel let's honor our father bishop Onubogu. thank you sir is this the best you can do Praise the name of the Lord. For many of us, our parents were not yet born when he started serving the gospel actively. And he's still standing there. When you see a man stand like this, there are just a few more steps. And this is a man in his 80s. And yet standing as strong as he is. Many of us, listen, many of us have only served the Lord for four years and we're tired. Some just started ministry, you are yet to even do a first year anniversary. And you're already tired, you're about to throw this thing and go and look for a job. But here is a man who has served for decades. One more time. East of the Niger, please honor your very own, our father, the bishop. Hallelujah. Similarly, I'd like us to honor, listen, the call to be a man of God is the noblest call any man can have in this side of God's kingdom. The second most honorable position that God gives man outside being a man of God is being a father or a mother, a parent. The third most honorable position is being a monarch. There are positions that money cannot buy. The highest of them is the privilege to represent the purposes of the kingdom. The second is the privilege to raise another life and train another life and release that life. It's greater than anything, degrees, whatever it is. The honor of being a parent physically spiritually that you oversee a life from start until you release them and then the third is the honor of being a monarch because nothing dethrones you ordinarily until death all of these three noble calls it is only death that does you part so i like us to while standing appreciate you know we live in a time where it's easy to criticize men of God. It's easy to tear people down. My pastor does not have Rema and all these kinds of things. But many people may never understand the challenge that comes with bearing the cross. Many men of God have sacrificed their families, their children to see that the gospel advances. Many of them have sacrificed their health while standing with understanding. 
I want you to please honor the Lord for every man, every woman of God here represented, whether up the stage or across. Hallelujah. Don't, don't just clap here and forget it. Let it be a lesson for you. Your pastor, your campus fellowship leader probably, anyone who genuinely names the name of Christ, you owe them a duty to number one, pray for them. You owe them a duty number two, to protect them. You owe them a duty number three, to support them. Hallelujah. Are we ready for tonight? Please lift your hands to Jesus and ask him for a visitation. Go ahead and bless him. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever, Lord. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever, Lord. Lift your voice and sing with me. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever, Lord. I'll serve you. I'll serve you forever. I'll serve you forever. I'll serve you forever, Lord. Be lifted up. Be lifted forever. Be lifted forever. Be lifted. Forever, Lord, we lift you up, we lift it forever, we lift it forever, Lord. Wave your hands, everybody, and sing Hosanna, Hosanna, forever, Hosanna, forever, Hosanna. Forever, Lord. One more time. Hosanna, Hosanna. Forever, Hosanna. Forever, Hosanna. Forever, Lord. I love you forever. Sing it one more time with understanding. You're talking to Jesus. This is our declaration that we love you as a people unashamedly sincerely truly Lord we pray that Jesus will be revealed and even glorified tonight heal the sick let your press be delivered turn lives around impart your grace upon as many Reveal Jesus in such a powerful way tonight. Birth saviors out of this conference. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Turn to someone whilst you prepare to sit on your left and right and tell them let your heart be open tonight. And then please be seated. God bless you. I was thinking about what I'll be sharing now and I was wondering what I would really share and what I would omit because 
to do justice to the issue of revival the emergence of saviors it will require more than a week long to cover topic after topic these are not these are very very cardinal teachings as far as the making of mighty men is concerned and so I will do my best to just touch on a few very important areas for tonight so that we can work with time but I assure you that there is a lot to cover the entire course content that exposes us to what it takes to be mightily used by God is a vast content that we must meticulously approach but we trust God for grace tonight in Jesus name God still desires to use men Jeremiah chapter 1 from verse 5 the Bible exposes us to a discussion between a young prophet on his way to beginning the process that would lead him to later become a marvelous prophet unto the nations verse 5 Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 5 let's follow the discourse up to verse 11 before I form thee in the belly I knew thee and before thou camest forth out of the womb the Bible says I sanctified thee and I ordained thee to be a prophet unto the nations so that was Jeremiah's designation as far as his assignment as far as his witness was concerned and then Jeremiah in fear responded verse 6 he says ah Lord God behold I cannot speak why for I am a child Jeremiah began to lament Lord how would you commit such an enormous responsibility of being a prophet to the nations I am but a child but the Lord rebuked him in verse 7 and said say not I am a child for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee everybody say send thee one more time say send thee take note of that and whatsoever I command thee thou shalt speak verse 8 be not afraid of their faces for I am with thee to deliver thee saith the Lord and then verse 9 he says he put forth his hand and touched my mouth and the Lord said unto me behold I have put my words in thy mouth 10 see i have set thee this day over the nations over the kingdoms to root out to pull down to destroy to throw down to build and to plant the assignment of a gentleman as a young boy jeremiah had this encounter with the god of the bible and the context of that encounter was a revelation to him about his assignment about that which the Lord would commit unto him and knowing the vastness of the responsibility that came with that assignment he began to cry and he said Lord I cannot do this I am but a child they wouldn't pay attention to me and he says no do not say that but you shall go to whoever I shall send you to and you shall say everything I command you to say and you carry this consciousness that I am with you to protect to defend you listen in every generation in every generation without exception the Bible modern history is full of periods in time where God would seem to find men and even women who will desire him in such a an unusual way and would have him begin a process of dealing with them that will eventually lead to their emerging as powerful men and women of God powerful revivalists apostles prophets teachers evangelists pastors and so on and so forth whether it is Abraham whether it is Isaac, Jacob, Joshua, Elijah, Esther, Ruth, name them. The Bible is full of men and women 
who eventually became marvelously used of God within the context of their generation and then the Bible is also fair enough to allow us see the starting point of their journeys for some of them before they encountered God they were idol worshippers like Abraham some of them were from their backsliding state some of them were even direct persecutors of the church like Saul who would later become Paul so the Bible is full of the possibilities of this transition that no matter who you are where you are and how you start that there is a possibility of beginning a journey with God that leads to you being a savior a witness a battle axe a generational blessing if you're with me say amen it's important we get this background because there is a predestination for everyone in Christ the Bible lets us know that we are predestined before you were formed in your mother's womb I already knew you never the, uh, the idea of being a biological accident as we call it there is no such thing with God for every one of you sitting and hearing me listening or following online there is a divine destiny for you in Christ there is a space as far as God's program is concerned what you call purpose please pay attention what you call your assignment is simply your contribution to the manifestation of the kingdom the power and the glory of God on earth if we decide for instance that we are going to feed everyone in this auditorium and outside if we decide so how many of you know that that is a goal that is a task but we are going to break that task into different different units is that true there are those who will go to the market are you with me there are those who will do the cooking there are those who will sorry about that there are those who will bring the financial contribution is that true there are those who will help to carry the wood there are those who will help to slaughter the animals the protein that will be used every one of those people are important and there are those who will protect the food store from thieves they can cook but they can fight whoever wants to steal that bag of rice now do you realize that all of them are important for that ultimate goal to be achieved if the person who is to cook wakes up late even if those who go to buy the food finish early everybody will still suffer because someone failed in carrying out his duty the person who should buy the food stuff assuming the person decides to quickly attend a wedding and he will keep every other person those who are to cook have to wait for the food to arrive so even if they are there early because someone failed in his assignment every other person will suffer that consequence let me tell you therefore that for every time you delay in going through this school of the spirit someone else is paying the price for the delay there is a generation that suffers for every second and every day and every minute you delay if you are raised to be a prophet and you walk with God very late there are people who will die who your prophecy should have saved listen carefully are we together now so what you call your purpose is simply the role you have to play in God's universal agenda what is that agenda the name given to that agenda is thy kingdom come the manifestation of the fullness of the influence the power and the glory of God Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10 Paul was mentoring the church in Ephesus and he says to the intent that now unto principalities and powers Ephesians 3 10 help us media 
now on to the principalities and powers he says in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God when Jesus was leading them to pray he said when you pray pray thus our father which art in heaven he said hallowed be your name then he says thy kingdom come that is the name given to this universal mission no matter who you are no matter what area you will be serving the purposes of god the name of the mission is thy kingdom come someone shout it say thy kingdom come one more time say thy kingdom come what is the kingdom of god the kingdom of god is a representation of the entire culture the atmosphere the value system and the lifestyle of heaven the summation of the culture the summation of the value system the summation of the power and the glory that resides in heaven he desires that his kingdom come and find expression within the side of his kingdom thy kingdom come and he tells us how the kingdom comes when his will is being done in the earth as it is in heaven that means the kingdom of God will never come except his will is being done so our assignment is to be enforcers of his will because everywhere his will is done his kingdom comes how do you know that the government of a nation is alive and active or the government of a territory how do you know that the university the governing council of the university your vice chancellor for instance and and all the members of senate how do you know they are still active because their decisions are enforced any government that cannot enforce its decisions is not perceived to be in power this is how it is with the kingdom is that true yes before we started my my coming here we acknowledge the set man over the ministry the platform that has granted us this opportunity to share the word this is very important so we all have prophetic destinies in Christ now most of us will be called into what we know to be the fivefold ministry according to Ephesians chapter 4 when you begin to read from verse 9 but there are many of us who may not be called into the fivefold ministry however we will be kingdom ambassadors we call it serving the purposes of God you need to realize that just because you are not functioning in the fivefold ministry does not mean you are not in ministry I hope you I hope I put it right are we together now let's look at Ephesians chapter 4 God grant us grace tonight from verse 9 please go to verse 9 now he that descended what is it that he also descended into the lower parts of the earth I have verse 10 it says he that descended is the same also that ascended up far above the heavens that he might feel all things and then he says he gave unto some not all some apostles and some prophets please pay attention some evangelists and some pastors and teachers why next verse it says for the equipping verse 13 now the perfecting or 12 the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry everybody said the work of the ministry one more time please shout it the work of the ministry for the purpose of this discussion let me distinguish something very quickly the work of the ministry is the name given to the assignment of every believer ministry simply is a platform to serve the purposes of the kingdom the Bible says those we call ministers are merely the gifts that prepare the saints so that the saints now prepared will do the work of the ministry so in reality the ministers are not the apostles 
the prophets the evangelists the pastors and the teachers these fivefold are the gifts that prepare the ministers who are the ministers every other person mandated across different spheres of influence to represent the purposes of God the businessman is in ministry the professor is in ministry the media giant is in ministry the father is in ministry the husband is in ministry the trader in the market is in ministry if we do not plant a ministry consciousness then we will never be able to use our lives and what we do to reveal Jesus Christ so for most people we dichotomize our living I'm not a pastor so I'm not in ministry I can do whatever I like with my life I appease God by going to church on Sunday so that he knows that I am identifying with ministry it's an error everyone shout it say I am in ministry now you realize that anything is called ministry when it seeks to reveal Jesus and bring glory to him anything anything at all that sustains the capacity motivated by love and intended to reveal Jesus and glorify him is called ministry you have to get this definition are we together let me repeat myself again anything any activity on earth that is motivated by love for Jesus and intended to reveal Jesus and glorify him qualifies to be called ministry a woman's desire to bring forth a prophet who will be an advocate of the kingdom that desire to get pregnant and give birth to a man of God is called ministry a student's desire to study and excel with a first class so that someday he will become some of the spiritual gatekeepers within the educational sector that desire and that pursuit is called ministry are we together now the desire to raise responsible children so that someday these children will become leaders that will change society that desire if motivated by the law for Jesus and intended to be a contribution towards kingdom come is called ministry you have to get this I'm trying to be as simple and as basic as possible so the work of the ministry is not standing behind the pulpit necessarily with a crowd of people looking at you and then teaching them from scripture no that is not the original idea of ministry the work of the ministry means to spend your entire life motivated by your love for Jesus and that every activity in your life has one singular goal the revelation of Jesus and the glorification of the same the moment that becomes your pursuit you are in ministry you are not in ministry because oil was poured on your head you are not in ministry because you necessarily just went through a theological seminary as important as that is you are not in ministry just because there is a title pastor or apostle you are not a mini in ministry just because you're a campus uh what they call it now a president or or leader you are in ministry first by your motivation and then the goal that that motivation leads you to so it is possible to be a preacher but not be in ministry it is possible to be a religious leader and yet you are not in ministry why because if your motivation is not your love for Jesus and if your goal is not to see him revealed and glorified no matter how spiritual your activities are you are not in ministry Wow. if I ask you all the ministers for instance don't stand but if I say all the ministers stand up usually is the men of God here that will stand up while all of you clap for them after this conference of course you don't go around doing it but for the sake of this understanding you now know when we say where are the ministers the students should stand the doctor should stand the mother should stand is that true 
are, are you together now that you are in ministry and if they ask you who gave you the audacity to be in ministry your answer is number one my motivation my motivation is to love Jesus Christ it comes from a standpoint of love and number two my intention is to reveal him and glorify him anything done within the coordinates of that motivation is called ministry you have to understand this because there are many people today who are not doing the work of the ministry they are doing church they are doing religion they are doing crusades but it is not ministry that's why we began this session by singing that song i love you forever it is my motivation more than a desire to be seen more than a desire to be known more than a desire for ambition more than a desire for progress more than a desire for the uploads of men to see you high and lifted up you are shining in the light of your glory pour out your power and love as we sing holy 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 we'll see you high and lifted up you are shining in the light of your glory pour out your power and love as we sing holy 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 are we together now do you understand everything i've said so far if you're with me say amen. amen obadiah chapter 1 please now we look at verse 21 it was important for me to establish that foundation so that we can understand every other thing i'm going to be explaining here obadiah chapter 1 has only one chapter verse 21 it's projected please read with me if you can see ready together let's read one to read and saviors shall come up out of mount zion to judge the mount of esau and the kingdom shall be the lord's please look up the bible names a group and a class of people he calls them saviors and then number two he tells us their mission that they will judge the mount of esau to the end that the kingdom will be established as the Lord's in reality. Then number three, he will tell us where these people are coming out from. Zion. Take note of the following information. The name given to this class of people, he calls them saviors. Saviors. Mandated to preserve. Mandated to defend mandated to reveal saviors that they come out from mount zion and that they have the singular assignment of number one judging the mount of esau and number two seeing the establishment of the kingdom in reality this is a very powerful prophecy because when jesus came and he began to teach what we call the beatitudes he was adding flesh to prophecies like this when he said you are the salt of the earth he says and he says if the salt has lost its saltiness wherewith shall it be salted it is for no good except to be thrown and trampled underfoot by men do you know what salt is salt adds taste salt adds value and salt preserves many of our mothers and the women here can tell you that there are ways they can preserve whether meat or whatever protein they can use salt are we together now to preserve and the thing about salt is that it is never too late to add salt in food there are ingredients that if you don't add on time you've lost their validity or their usefulness but salt even when the food is on the table it can save you that embarrassment that means as the salt of the earth it is never too late for you to manifest even if you give your life to christ at age 70 there is still a place for you in destiny whether you add salt 
before you start cooking or after cooking it's not a mistake that is outside of the jurisdiction of management salt always has a way of fitting into the equation many of us here cook i like to use examples that have to do with cooking because it seems people seem to understand examples that have to do with money and examples that have to do with food <laughs> are we together so assuming you brought me a wonderful plate of food and i taste it and the salt is not enough i don't look at you and say go and throw that food and start afresh no i don't need to destroy the food i can still sprinkle salt and turn that food around and it will look as though it was there before that time by this revelation let me speak to someone it looks like you are already too late in destiny but in the name of jesus the son of the living god like salt you will catch up you will overtake and you will be relevant who would have known that the mandate to be the father of nations will come upon a man who began his journey at 75 we're not talking of jeremiah who was a teenager we're not talking of david who was a teenager we're not talking of joash who was a king at age eight or josiah at age nine we're talking of an old man who would have known that a woman called ruth who already was married the children died the husband died came over and yet she became the great grandmother of jesus salt oh rejoice not over me my enemies i may have missed the purposes of god in 2015 but i am still salt i'm coming there is still space for me in the oh there is still space there is still space there is still space for that prophetic grace on my life there is still space for that apostolic grace please sit down are we still together salt then he says ye are the light of the world it is never too late the thing about light is that light is always associated with speed you never light a room and give it five minutes to be bright the moment light comes darkness goes immediately speed no matter the pride of darkness when light shows up it is able to humble darkness according to john 1 verse 5 and the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not so everyone say i am in ministry now you know what you are saying i am in ministry means i am motivated by my love for jesus and i'm involved in activities that ultimately reveal jesus and bring him glory everyone say i am in ministry never forget this teaching tonight shout it let the devil hear you say i am in ministry i may never climb a pulpit but satan when you are counting ministers do not make a mistake of omitting me because i am in ministry and my contribution is so significant so it is your love for god your desire to see his kingdom come that moves you to become a businessman and when you are in oil and gas construction and people say ah mr man you like money you tell them no 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 let me correct that narrative i am not just a businessman i am a businessman in ministry my business is only a subset i am in ministry because my motivation is not just money my motivation is my love for jesus and my intention is to supply the financial resources that will help lift up the name of jesus so you will pursue money unashamedly knowing that i'm in ministry madam you have four children you are about to have the fifth one 
are you not tired of children and you tell them i am a mother in ministry i'm not just feeling children all around no i would have stopped at baby number three but i had a vision that my fifth child is a prophet and i will not stop the nations from having that prophet therefore my delivery is not just getting pregnant i am in ministry hear me you are a student here if the only reason why you are sitting down to take lectures is because you are afraid of failure it's not enough motivation while every other student is listening you are listening too why why are you giving your studies this kind of attention and you let them know that number one more than just a desire to do well and to excel I am in ministry as a student what is the ministry I need good grades so that I will get to this place that God is sending me to because someday I'm the one who will protect and defend the purposes of God so because of that I pay attention to what I'm doing your motivation becomes unusual it is not just to pass exams and go I love you forever now you know what you're singing I love you forever I love you forever so you can be a man of God but what will make you a man of God in ministry is not the ability to preach it is the motivation that I'm taking advantage of the privilege of the pulpit motivated by my love for Jesus I intend to use the tool of teaching scripture or the tool of preaching in a crusade or the tool of prophecy or the tool of ministering to the sick to reveal Jesus and bring him glory if you're a worship minister you may be a Christian worship minister but what makes you a worshiper in ministry is that you have the honor of using the gift of your voice and your songs motivated by your love for Jesus not a desire to have fame alone so when you stand to minister more than your voice when you stand to minister more than a desire to be part of the highest selling record artists it's a desire to see Jesus glorified and heaven signs you in and says you are in ministry Elijah was prophesying Isaiah was prophesying from chapter 1 to chapter 5 but he was not yet in ministry Isaiah officially started ministry in chapter 6 chapter 1 starts with him prophesying chapter 2 chapter 3 chapter 4 chapter 5 and then chapter 6 says in the year that King Uzziah died I saw the Lord when he saw the Lord he thought that they would say oh man of God you are doing a great job when he got there all he heard was who shall we send heaven was looking for ministers when they were still preachers on earth heaven was looking for ministers when they were businessmen on earth so when I tell you in this end time that God is looking for men he's had enough pastors he's had enough apostles he's had enough evangelists He's had enough students. There are about 7.6 billion people on earth. Many of them are preachers. Many of them are prophets. Many of them are apostles. Many of them are husbands. Many of them are wives. Only a handful are ministers. Is someone understanding my teaching tonight? Now, very quickly, I may not do so much tonight just to give us this introduction let me share with you a few keys let's discuss the making of these saviors how did these ordinary men become saviors in the bible and how do ordinary people transit in the spirit until they become 
saviors doing the work of the ministry you have to understand how this works hmm. I lift my hands to you you're the awesome God I lift my hands to you awesome God awesome God I lift my voice You're the awesome God. I lift my hands to you. Awesome God. Awesome God. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 19. Let's begin to examine scripture to see how God makes ordinary men. Listen to me. You are a young person here. In ministry or trusting God to walk in the ministry now you know what I'm saying whether it is the fivefold or ministry as far as representing the purposes of the kingdom is concerned just because you have a destiny in Christ does not mean you will be used the way you are how many of you know that every time you see a job vacancy under that announcement there are conditions is that true we are looking for a driver say and they will tell you he should have the following number one a driver's license number two at least five years experience so when you look at it even though there is a vacancy you have to find out first whether you have subscribed for that qualification an oil and gas firm is open they are looking for a b c d but here are the conditions if you meet that condition you can take the step if you don't very sincerely you back down we all have enviable destinies in Christ but sadly not many of us will have the opportunity to walk in the fullness of that call except you pay attention to what I'm about to share within the next few minutes lay your hands on your head and pray in the spirit in one minute Lord open my understanding I'm about to share with you within the next 10 to 15 minutes the making of saviors please prophesy my mind is open my spirit man is open to receive in Jesus name Matthew chapter 4 please and verse 19 let's see how Jesus himself recruited ordinary men because you see theologically speaking the way you study scripture is to look at the models the bible says the things that are written at four time they are for our learning so that we through the comfort of scripture might find hope is that true so we look at the model the way it was done in scripture and we build our pattern around it so here is jesus in ministry and he's about to draw ordinary men who would later be the apostles of the lamb the bearers of this light are we following now it says and he said unto them follow me everyone shout it say follow me and I will make you fishers of men leave that scripture there so we see that Jesus had an assignment in the life of the believers but they had an assignment to themselves their own assignment is follow me Jesus never said follow it he said follow me that means the first requirement listen to me if you want to be made by God the first requirement according to scripture is to understand that your calling is to Jesus not to ministry your calling I know we say we are called to ministry but every believer's calling is not to a thing you are not called to a city necessarily you are not called to a pulpit you are not called to business your calling is to Jesus when Jesus finds you he calls you first to himself it is Jesus who makes it is not ministry that makes 
follow me follow me is the first call listen until you fulfill your calling you cannot fulfill your ministry your calling to Jesus if you have not fulfilled that calling to Jesus you will never be effective as a savior when God is about to walk with men he calls them to himself mm. very powerful very very powerful come follow me he says so you begin that followership the goal is to eventually become a witness a savior a world changer but the first assignment is to Jesus our calling is to Jesus this is the secret of my life you can never fail in ministry if you succeed in following if you succeed in following you can never truly fail everybody say follow me everybody say my calling is to Jesus now what happens when he calls you there are many things I will run through them two or three things for the sake of the night we're going to pray and um, we may not have all the time to discuss but the first thing that happens when the Lord calls you to himself listen to me when he calls you to himself he submits you through a season of dealing that leads you to a state in the spirit called brokenness Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20 when he calls you to himself he does not send you he does not empower you when Jesus called the disciples he called them to himself he didn't send them there was no mention of anointing the first thing he began to do was to work on them their ideologies their convictions their passions are we together I have been crucified with Christ Paul said nevertheless I live yet not I but Christ that lives in me and the life that I live in the flesh or the body I live by the faith of the Son of God now please listen to me I'm sharing with you something very deep now I'm showing you why many people are not powerful in the spirit I'm showing you why many people do not have authority over nations and systems many people were called they did not stay to excel in their calling and they quickly left their calling to do ministry when he calls you it is to reveal himself to you and to make you you see that pattern all through scripture when Moses was about to be sent the first thing God did was to call him he saw a bush that was burning and not consumed he said I will turn aside and see this great sight and the moment God called him he said take off your shoes for where thou standest is holy ground and he says I'm going to send you to this and that and that and Moses said whom shall I tell them has sent me and he says you are calling for a revelation of me I am that I am when he revealed himself to Moses and Moses had that encounter he said now on the strength of this encounter go to Pharaoh do you know listen to me it never tires me to share a bit of my story when I started with God sir I didn't even know that there was anything called ministry I sincerely loved him with all my heart when I started with God it was not a pursuit for money it was not a pursuit for fame it was not a pursuit for apostle I didn't even know that I was going to be a preacher all I wanted was his presence all I wanted was his glory all I wanted was Jesus is still my pursuit till tomorrow Jesus Jesus 
it was not power I was looking for it was not anointing I was looking for it was not revelation I was looking for Jesus I wanted him desperately he was the object of my pursuit reveal yourself to me oh Lord grant me the privilege of knowing you show me your face show me your glory that was my pursuit it still remains my pursuit till today do you know why it's important to meet Jesus because if you do not encounter Jesus the challenges that will be waiting where you, you will send you to you will not have the stamina to face them I hope you know that between Moses and the nation of Israel in captivity is a wizard called Pharaoh you are not going to be able to do justice to Pharaoh until you meet with Jesus Elijah was asleep and he was given food bread to eat which was a type of Jesus he says eat the journey you are about to take you have not started that journey there is still a level of nourishment you need to have he ate a little and slept and the angel tapped him and said I know where you are going the journey is far prophesy to someone by your left and right say my brother or my sister the journey is far don't rush as if you are going to finish ministry tomorrow the journey is far your first call is to Jesus if you have not met Jesus fame will kill you if you have not met Jesus money will kill you if you have not met Jesus honor will kill you if you have not met Jesus pride will kill you if you have not met Jesus lust will kill you you may never know the tendencies that are in your heart until they honor you with some little fame Apostle Joshua Selman suddenly you find out that your passion for prayer is no longer there because after all it was an ambition you wanted to be successful using the tool of ministry I tell you this as as I grow in the Lord and as I grow in ministry and in leadership I begin to see the vanity of everything in life outside of Jesus and believe me I know what I'm saying in my own little way I have seen God honor me I know what it means to stand before kings and nobles I know what it means to be honored but I tell you this it is absolutely nothing if all I have is Jesus I've got something more than gold I will tell it to my world Jesus is more than gold hear me look at me there are many of you here if we keep Jesus here and we keep fame here you will not only run to carry the fame you will push Jesus while you're on your way to picking that fame there are many campus fellowship presidents looking at me you are preaching but you are not in ministry because the idea is not the revelation of Jesus there are many sincere people it was never Jesus it was a desire to outshine or a desire to prove a point to your loved ones that you are not a failure as important as that is that is too small a reason while I sat back here and I watched many of you watching the protocol bring me and people were clapping you know my prayer oh God may these people not be deceived by some of these things sitting in front holding a mic having protocol move you those things are just systems of honor just to coordinate and appreciate the grace if your heart help those under the anointing there if your heart is far from God listen to what I'm telling you you will never be a mighty tool that God will use in this end time it is the reason why many people will keep preaching but they will find out that God has moved and you are just doing your thing alone and you are saying God you did not carry me along he said no I carried you you came down from the carriage in 
in in a bid to find honor in a bid to find money and many of you here our wonderful ones and students be careful who you mentor and how you get mentorship be careful what you are learning because some of you as sincere as you are you are already learning mistakes not by bad people they may be sincere people be careful what you are learning drop all this pride for nothing drop all this self for nothing looking for an empire for myself and return back to the place where great men are made let me show you how the great are made in this kingdom this is how they are made for as long as your knees remain on the ground you will remain on top it's a mystery dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the phase of development lord grant me the discipline